Welcome to this series of tutorials on how to use ChatGPT to analyze your Excel data. My name is Ian and I will be taking you through the tutorials. So in this first tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we just set up our ChatGPT and we're going to be doing some basic instructions. So you're going to see that we can just use plain, simple, straightforward questions and statements to get ChatGPT to do a lot of sophisticated data analysis. Now, please note that you do need the paid version of ChatGPT, so that is a prerequisite to be able to use this. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all our latest content. But let's jump into the tutorial. I will see you there. Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're just going to go through a little bit of setup just to get our ChatGPT up and running and ready for the rest of the data analysis that we're going to be doing in this series of tutorials. Okay, so the first thing is you can see that I'm logged into ChatGPT. Now, it's been mentioned many times, you do need to have the paid account for ChatGPT. And the reason for that is you need access to the ChatGPT4. And you can see it here that we get ability to do analysis. The other key feature that we get is we get the ability to be able to upload files into ChatGPT for the analysis. So those two parts are really crucial in what we will need to do. You will find over on the side here that you do get some additional setup. So if you go to the My Plan, you'll see over here that currently I'm using the Plus Plan. You can get a team plan as well. So if there's more than one of you and you'd like to have a team plan, you can use that. There are some settings and capabilities that you can set up here. So you could go through your settings, but you'll see these are pretty self-explanatory. So you could just work through these yourself. So as I was saying, pretty easy to get up and ready. The main part is, is that you need the paid version of ChatGPT. Now the next part is we need some data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my Excel. I'm going to bring it up on the screen and we're just going to have a quick look at the data that we're going to be working with during this series of tutorials. OK, so let's bring up that Excel file. OK, so as you'll see on the screen at the moment, we've got a table of data in Excel. So this is the sales data we're going to be using for our data analysis. And you can see it's got quite a few different fields. We've got an order ID, date, quantity, sales and profit, customer name, customer state, region, product category, product subcategory and a product name. So many different ways that we can actually analyze this data. I think there's around 8,400 rows of data. So if you go down, you'll see the bottom of the table here, around 8,400. So if we take away our header row, then we actually have 8,399 rows of data itself. So as I say, this is the data that we're going to be using within ChatGPT. So let's go back to ChatGPT. I'm going to load this data in there. And we're just going to do a couple of quick little queries on this just to get this up and running. OK, so the first part that I've done is I've clicked on the insert file here and we've just gone in and we've selected that data.excel file that we were looking at just now. So we've just selected that and we're going to upload it. So the first part is I'm going to just give a command to ChatGPT and I'm going to tell it to load this file and list the fields. So we'll just say load the file and list fields. OK, so there we've got our statement that we wanted to do, our prompt. I'm going to upload that, send that up there. And one of the things you're going to see during this series of tutorials is that the next part is it does this analyzing. Now, depending on what you're giving it to do, it can sometimes quite a bit of time. Now, I have noticed more recently it's getting quicker. So hopefully when it comes to doing things for yourself, you're going to find that it just gets quicker and quicker over time. But what we might be doing is we might actually speed up some of the parts of the video when it's doing the analyzing, just so that we're not sitting here waiting for that to be done. But as you can see, good news is we've now actually got that. We've got it uploaded, and then it gives me a list of those field names that you'll remember seeing from Excel. So that's good news. Now let's say, for example, we wanted to do a little bit more analysis on this. Let's say, for example, we wanted to know for each of these field names, we want to know what type of field it is. And also, we could also maybe say to it that we want to know for the numeric fields, what is the range of values that are in those numeric fields? So what we can do is we can actually give it a prompt and we could say, let's say we want to create a table. So we're going to say create a table and I'm going to tell it to display the field names, field types, and range of values for the numeric fields. So let's have a quick look at that. Because this is really where it becomes important when you're working with ChatGPT, is that we're actually taking the prompt and, and we're structuring it like we would if we were just giving a statement or a question or a command in the English language. 
So I'm just saying create a table, display the field names, field types, and the range of values for the numeric fields. So it's just like me speaking to a colleague and saying, please do this for me. Okay, so let's send that up and let's see what get, comes out of that. Okay, so you can see now that it starts to tell me here is a table, it's displaying the field name, field types, and range of values for the numeric fields. And there we go. Then it's actually showing that table for me as well. So it's got a nice little header there and it's got each row, each piece of information for me. And as you can see, the range of values is actually a min max value. So you can see that it's going from three to 59973 for my order ID and the sales values as well. It shows me the minimum value, the maximum value. And that was really just from one statement. So this really is quite nice to be able to see this doing that. Now what actually is happening in the background is that code is being created to do this. And the way that you see this code is you can actually click on this button where it says view analysis. When you click on this, it will actually then show us the Python code that is actually being used to create this. And there we go. It's got the field details, field name, field type, range of values, and you've now actually got that all over there. And then shows you a little bit of a result for that as well. You could copy this code if you wanted to see this in another application as well. Okay, so it's really easy to be able to do this. Now let's actually take this data and let's look at some of these field names. So let's say, for example, we wanted our region, we wanted our sales. So we wanted to create a table and we want to see the total sales for each of the regions. So again, we can just structure that as a question or a prompt that we want to do. So we can say create a table and just tell it, display the total sales by the different regions. So there we go. You can see that the prompt that we got creates a table, display the total sales by regions. And again, we just send that up into ChatGPT. And again, it will do its analysis. So as you can see now, it starts to create that table for me. Now I know there's only four regions in this table. So it's showing me each of the regions and the sales values also look quite correct. Now if I look at the table, I might decide I want to do a little bit of work on it though. I might want to, for example, so I've got these decimal numbers, they don't look very good. Also, I might want a total, so it totals this up. So what we can do is we can tell it to actually format the table in a specific way. So let's say, for example, I want to say format the table to, and I'm going to say it must use the thousand separators, and we're going to use no decimals. Okay, so that's the formatting. And then what I could do is add another instruction here and just say add a total as well. Okay, let's send that. And there we go, we'll now get our new table and hopefully the formatting of the table will look pretty good. It looks like it. So if you wanted to, you could also tell it to use currency if you wanted to. Say I want to use a dollar currency with that. And this is one of the things from the tutorials. Please just do your own experimentation, do your own things, give it a try. Okay, let's try something else. Let's say, for example, we now wanted to export this table. So let's say I want to say export the table as a Excel file. Again, we'll just send that. And there we go. Now it gives me a downloadable link. I just click on that. I can download the file, open it up in my Excel, and I'll see that set that table that we've just had. Another factor that I might want to do, if I'm looking at this, I might want to actually see this as a graph. So let's say I want to create a column graph for the table. And I'm going to tell it to also just exclude. I don't know if it would include the total, but I'm going to tell it to exclude the total. Okay, so we're going to tell it to create a column graph for the table, exclude the total. And there we go. We've now got our column graph showing me the sales by each of the regions. And in a later tutorial, we're going to look at graphs by itself, but I could add a legend to this. I could actually add data labels. You could do a little bit more work, but we'll cover that in a later tutorial. The last part I want to show you on this tutorial though, again, just like we could download the table, if I wanted to say download the graph as an image, 
just put that there. And again, now it creates a downloadable link for me to be able to download this graph as an image. So there we go, a little bit of an overview, just some of the instructions that we can give to JetGBT. We've got a whole series of tutorials we're gonna be going through. You're gonna see there's some fantastic stuff that we can do. I'm gonna conclude this tutorial here, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.